Good morning, everyone. All right, so what we're going to do today is, as you can see, we've got the scope set up, part three, I think now, or part four of oscilloscope basics. So super raw basics for anyone who wants to, you know, start to learn how to use a scope, how to set up a scope, just physically set it up. Now, what I'm going to do today is pressure pulse sensors specifically so in here we've got a pressure pulse sensor um, all it is is basically a little piezo sensor in there which will react and create a voltage for the scope to read when there is a pressure change so we're going to start with a intake pressure waveform now reason being for that and where these will get used generally and where I use them generally is if we're worried about an engine mechanical issue so say a car comes in with a dead misfire we've done all our preliminary checks so fuel system ignition system and we're worried about a engine mechanical burnt broken knackered intake exhaust valve compression issue etc now moving on from a relative compression test and I will usually do a relative compression test at the same time as this. Um, what we are capturing here is basically the vacuum and the pressure of whatever we put it in. Now, one thing to remember and why I want to do two separate videos on this is that our intake pressure pulse sensors are completely different to a pressure transducer or your Pico WPS 500. So they will read actual pressure they will read you know 1 psi 10 psi 100 psi whereas all this is reading is a difference now what we'll do or what I'll do is I'll actually show you on the scope so if we've got the scope hooked up here initial setup simple just one channel scope lead in you've got two wires that go into the end of your pressure pulse sensor now what I'll show you here is if we bump this time base down actually we'll bump that time base up you can see there if I blow into this pressure pulse sensor you don't have a set reading right if I pause that you have what's basically called a slingshot effect so when there's pressure going into the sensor you can see it's going down and then that is the slingshot effect of that piezo and that tapers off into you know a flat line reading a zero volt reading now the big difference between this and our WPS, so our pressure transducer, is that that will read absolute actual pressure. So there is differences and that is something that you have to be aware of is that we're not looking at actual intake manifold vacuum or actual exhaust pressure, etc, etc. We're looking at a visual representation of it. So what we're looking for here is a even pattern. So at the minute I've got our injectors unplugged. Um, what I'll normally do, going back to our example, is we've done a relative compression test, we're worried about an in-cylinder issue or a valve train issue. I will put a pressure pulse sensor in the intake manifold. So right here, all we're plugged into is a vacuum line, but you can just put it down into the air box, um, ideally behind the throttle body, but wherever you can get it. We will also put one into the exhaust. So I can link this video to some photos of a Nissan that we diagnosed with a burnt intake valve with a pressure pulse sensor. But all you'll literally do is plug, put one of those hose pipes up in the exhaust there. Now, the next thing that we need to do obviously set the scope up um, so this car is set to you know just crank over we've got no fuel enabled we've got all our injectors unplugged so it will crank and crank and crank all day long now we want a long enough time base on here so let's bump that to one second a division and i'm on a one volt scale i might even go to a 500 millivolt scale <coughs> um, from there we basically just want to either set a trigger or get someone to crank this car over and we'll see what waveform we capture all right, so what we've got here is about a, what, one, two, three, four, five second capture of this engine cranking. So much as, you know, the same with the relative compression test, as you can see, it started up high and we've worked down to a nice even pulse. So if we zoom into this, like that, you can see we've got nice and even cranking pulses or intake manifold pressure and vacuum pulses. Now that there tells me that all our intake valves, so cylinder one, two, three, and four, are sealing correctly or at least evenly, um, and that, that intake is basically functioning correctly. So in this case, we're not worried about an intake valve issue. Obviously there isn't a problem with this car, so this is great. Um, now what you would see and what you you know is definitely what you're looking for is a deviation so if we do this test on a vehicle that's got say a dead miss on cylinder three 
and we have our relative compression test hooked up and we have you know substantially less intake vacuum on our cylinder three hump you know say this is it and say our relative compression test says this is it if our vacuum for the intake is down here or down here depending on what way you switched around then we know that we're looking at an intake sealing issue or an intake valve issue um, same as you know pressure intake pressure we can be looking at a valve that is stuck closed or something like that so it is not a test that gives you an accurate result in the way of actual pressure or actual vacuum but it's very very quick and easy to set up and it will give you a direction as to whether you've got a mechanical issue a valve issue you know intake or exhaust valve issue so what i'll do now is i'll pull up a couple of old waveforms from a nissan that we looked at um, it was at another workshop had a burnt exhaust valve and that is visible on the exhaust waveform capture so i'll pull that up now all right, so what we've got here is a Nissan. Now this is a four cylinder petrol engine. Um, and what we had was basically a dead miss on one cylinder. So what we did and what I did initially was I scoped just with a secondary pipe, all our ignition patterns, they all looked good. So all our ignition system was functioning and firing correctly. We then scoped all our injectors. So that was a current ramp um, across all four injectors with a fuse tap, which is something that we can also show how to do if people are interested. Um, as you can see, all four injectors have a good current ramp. They're all you know, rather identical. We might actually zoom in on one of these patterns. Um, but what we found, and we did end up confirming with an in-cylinder test, is we had quite a large amount or a deviation in one cylinder, and I believe it was cylinder three off the top of my head, um, in the exhaust. So that is a anomaly in the exhaust pressure. Obviously we're looking for an even pattern, much like what we were looking at with the intake over there. Um, and we had that deviation there. Now that ended up being a burn exhaust valve on that cylinder, so it wasn't functioning correctly, mechanical issue, etc. But the idea of your secondary, oh, sorry, of your pressure pulse sensors is to be quick and non-intrusive. You know, you're at most pulling a vacuum line off or taking an air box lid off you know, or just putting a hose straight in the exhaust pipe. So it's very, very simple. Um, it works great with all your basic checks. So like your relative compression, your ignition checks, as you can see, it all ties in, but it can be used very easily to verify a mechanical issue. You know, in this case, this was for another shop. Um, that shop then has to talk to their customer and decide whether they are going to tear that engine down, you know, and inspect further or whatever they want to do from there. So that's where a pressure pulse sensor is used. Um, the main thing to remember with it is it does not give you an accurate pressure measurement. So you're not going to put it in a, oh, you know, anything, a pressure sensor or something and look for an accurate reading because it has a slingshot effect. So all you're looking for in this is evenness and a smooth pattern, basically, you know, a waveform that is good a waveform that is even across the board so that's the main thing that you're going to want to look for with pressure pulse sensors um, and we'll move on to pressure transducers next and give a bit of info about pressure transducers and how they work but that's what you're looking for with a pressure pulse sensor um, and that is our good intake capture so you know we have no deviances in the valve train or at least these four intake runners Okay, so last thing I want to touch on with these pressure pulse sensors is what to get and where to get them. Um, now, they are definitely, you know, you can make them yourself and make them at home, um, as I've done with a few. I've got four that I've made here just with a 3D printer as, you know, a basic test to play around. Um, they do work. If you want to purchase them, and I do recommend everyone purchasing at least one good one or two good ones before they, you know, even attempt to make one, being that you want to, you know, a known good sensor, a sensor that you know functions correctly to learn on and to play with before you start trying to make your own. Um, the two main guys that I found initially started making these, and I'm sure there's more out there, would be Cody from Cody's Auto Diagnostics um, and I believe Brandon from Jarhead Diagnostics. So this is a Jarhead one. Um, I have got one of Cody's ones as well that is in my other tool bag at the minute um, but they're really really high quality Brandon does them with these detachable fittings so you can put what kind of barb fitting you want in there um, and then obviously just your four mil banana jacks and you can get them with a BNC too so really really high quality sensors they last really well obviously don't go throwing them around a room but they're super super tough um, 
it is a very simple sort of design but it functions great so i'll show you the websites now this is cody's website um we'll tag him as well there's plenty of options of sensors that you can get as well so he's got different colors and styles etc um, no different with brandon so as you can see there you've got multiple different types so i definitely recommend you know even if you're thinking about making your own or trying to make your own at least buy one or two known good ones for you to start with um, and this is jahead diagnostics website another place that i've purchased these from and they're also fantastic um, one of your other big brands that does them is first look i've heard mixed reviews about the first look sensors they're a ditec sensor i believe um, not to bag them or say anything bad about them. I haven't got one, I haven't used one, but I haven't necessarily heard great things about them either. Some people say they're a little bit iffy out of the box. Um, some people have had deviances in readings and things like that, or they don't last too well. So I can attest to the quality of these two. Um, if you want to purchase one and go from there.